Let's see. All right, Jersey, thanks for joining. And if you haven't, were you planning to um, plan an event this year? Yeah, we're playing third quarter. Okay. Oh, first quarter. Okay. Wow, three in first quarter. Okay, and you're planning one. Hi, Taj. Haven't seen you in forever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So a lot of you guys were planning. You had to postpone three in the first quarter. I know that was hard. That was hard. Okay, but we're gonna learn. We're gonna turn. Tell you how to turn those lemons into lemonade. Mm -hmm. um, my favorite girl, BB, would do, um, and definitely how to pivot and still be able to possibly do these events again next year. Um, but then just utilize some of the content that you have and put it in for this year. Um, yeah, definitely crazy times, right? Okay. Nope, not that. Okay, there we go. So why events? So again, events are important because one is brand building, right? Um, as you're developing your brand, whether you're a small profit, um, a small business, um, you are you're alone, one woman or one man show, have your LLC, it's important to host events. Even without the pandemic, I would still say host events, right? Um, and because it, it helps you build your brand. Um, not only that, it gets you exposure. You get ex exposed to different people who you've not been in your regular circle. Um, and that's important because it's great to have your friend, your family and your friends invest in you, but really your true um, business, your true income come from people who don't really know you that well, but has heard from you through the grapevine. And so that doesn't happen and you can't get um, through other networks if you don't host live events. So it's definitely important to do post um, pandemic, definitely host events. Um, but during this pandemic, we can definitely host events. And now you have multiple ways to do that. Um, and we have plenty of time to do that as well. Whether you record them, um, whether you do um, telesummits or um, you do a webinar, hosting events is definitely important for your brand. Again, for like nonprofits who um, still need to work with the community, depending on what your nonprofit is, is important to host that. I know there's a couple of nonprofits that um, do um, daily or weekly um, events, and that's important because um, as a nonprofit, you still have to be out there. Um, and as, again, as a small business, you still have to be out there. So that's definitely important to do, right? So events are important for your brand. Um, now, making sure to, you know, I'm very big, and Pierre would tell you, very big on organization. And so we want to make sure that we have pre-meetings. So whether you have a, a small team or whether you're by yourself, you have a meeting with yourself, right? And so you need to pre-plan this. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to do an event. I'm going live on Facebook. Let's go. No, there's a purpose. The same thing that you would do with your live event, you're just taking this from live into virtual. So the same prep meetings that you would need to have, um, you're not um, gonna be doing a walkthrough of a venue, but a walkthrough of Zoom. If you've never used Zoom or Webinar Ninja, we get to the different platforms for that. But make sure you do a walkthrough and understand the mechanisms of how things work. Test it out, record yourself, look back at it. Uh, making sure you have an outline. Um, um, like Pierre and I were planning for this meeting, we had an outline. We shared a Google Doc and had an outline of what we're talking about, bullet points to understand so you can make sure you're knowing who your audience is. Along with the pre-meeting, we'll never, don't ever forget your target audience. Who is your target audience? Who are you um, are really trying to reach to? Because our end goal, of course, we know that we're going to be very sensitive to, the, to this time. But we also need to make sure that we understand uh, we have to have some income coming in too, right? So we need to have the, 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 get, the end plan is definitely building some income. But as you're doing your pre-meeting, understand what that means and how to still be sensitive to the, to the subject of people may not be having some income coming in or may um, want to limit their income because they're just kind of unsure where we're going to be. A lot of people are kind of holding on to coins versus spending them because we don't know how long we're going to be in this situation. So pre-meetings are definitely important. I would add to that, Melissa. One, mm -hmm. of, the, one of the things you really want to avoid in, in doing virtual events, just the same way you would do live events, is trying to figure out things in the middle of what's going on. I've been on so many Zoom calls and virtual events where the person had no idea 
about the tech. They couldn't explain how to deal with the technical issues that come up. It, it happens in, in real life. It happens in virtual. So you want to be able to walk through, just like I know uh, Justin's on here. He, he's a musician. He's a vocalist and a pastor. Just like you would do a walkthrough uh, of a service, a walkthrough, or pre-planning for a concert, you want to do the same walkthrough so that you can minimize uh, any, any distractions that may come up. Absolutely. Absolutely. So platforms. So I'll, I'll have Pierre start with Webinar Ninja because that's his, his newbie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's so many platforms out there that you can use for, for live events. One of the platforms that I really enjoy uh, right now is Webinar Ninja for, for a couple of reasons. Uh, I really love the, the, the webinar format because it gives me a bit more control over, over the functionality. It's really easy to aggregate the data because data is a big part and we'll talk about that a little bit later as we talk about making offers, um, the functionality of the platform. And then it also provides us a, a slightly different look. Now I love Zoom, uh, I love a lot of the different platforms, but, but Webinar Ninja is really good, especially if you have a series that you're doing and you can pre-plan that series and, and the functionality really, really works for uh, more of a business context or more of a summit context. So, and you know, there's a lot of different webinar platforms out there. Webinar Ninja, um, my mind just went blank <laughs> of all the webinar <laughs> webinar platforms. But if you Google webinar, yeah. um, you'll see multiple platforms out there. Webinar Jam, that's the one I was thinking of, Taj. Thank you for putting mm -hmm, that in my mind. Mm -hmm. Here, here's the thing about platforms, and we'll, we'll talk about a, a couple of other ones as well figure out which one works best for you. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when people are recommending platforms really, really hard, it's probably because they have some affiliate relationship and they're trying to get some extra coins for you signing up and there's nothing wrong with that. But play around with platforms uh, that work for, for you. The ones that fit your price point, the ones that fit your bandwidth or the number of people you're trying to serve and the ones that fit your technical expertise. So. You got to really figure out what, what platform works for you. Webinar Ninja works for me right now. Yeah. And I, I'm a Zoom girl, <laughs> um, though I know people, a lot of issues for Zoom. And again, um, you have to understand people. They were not, even with Facebook and Instagram, sometimes it's crashing with the algorithms and all that. People were not expecting this to happen mm -hmm. at one time. Like 97% of the country is in the situation. Um, but normally Zoom can also um, integrate with Facebook. So you can go from Zoom and go Facebook Live. Same with YouTube. And Webinar Ninja can do the same as well. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I would always say if you have a Facebook group or a Facebook business page, make sure you're doing Facebook Lives, either weekly or um, definitely, I mean, the minimum to me is weekly. If you can't, then you're dropping a video in there. If you can't do a live, you're at least dropping a video in there. Um, and then, and then definitely, um, let's not forget YouTube, the power of YouTube and where people are getting paid via YouTube. Um, and once you get, um, is it too, once you get a certain amount of, um, people who subscribe on YouTube, I want to say a hundred, but it could be less than that now that you're able to do YouTube live. And that can also go back to, um, different platforms as well. So whichever one, like Pierre said, people do have, um, affiliates. Um, and that might be your thing too. You can get paid from affiliates as well using affiliate links. Um, but just do something that works for you. Um, I know as I started doing lives, um, it was very um, nerve wracking to just continue to do all these lives all the time, right? So do something that is not gonna be um, hard to do, but easy for you to do that you're always willing to do it. So you have no excuse but to do it, right? Yeah. I will also add to that, Melissa. There's one that I that I didn't mention that one is StreamYard. Now StreamYard is a yeah. unique platform just for streaming and you can broadcast to multiple platforms at the same time. You can go Facebook Live, YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, all at the same time. And one of the things that you really gotta ask yourself is what's my what's my goal? If my goal is just to you know, put content out, do a weekly sort of broadcast where it's just you. Um, you might want to just look at a streaming platform. Uh, if you're looking to build community, you have a series of classes or workshops that you, that you want to do, you might want to 
choose a more closed platform um, so that you can, because everybody's working, worried about security. Mm-hmm. Everybody's worried about, you know, who, who's around when they're asking questions. So pick the platform again, that works, works for you. Uh, Justin says he's zoomed out. He's just mm-hmm. heard of StreamYard the other day and he yeah. give it a try. Yeah. Um, yeah, Zoom, yeah, Zoom Yard is definitely um, a, a one I think I'm definitely going to start looking into because one, you can stream to multiple things at one time. So you don't have to download your video and upload it and all that stuff. It can just go to all the platforms at one time. So that's definitely if you have multiple um, plat- multiple plugins that you want to do, that's definitely a way to go as well. Um, but research, just like how we are on Amazon and we look at the reviews, mm-hmm. research, research, research. Um, this is definitely the time to test different things and you never know what will work best for you or what's in your palette i say okay so our um next one are flyers um and so just like our beautiful flyer was done on what pierre it was done on canva canva Canva. (laughs) (laughs) it's my favorite it's my favorite go-to um if if ever in doubt canva um, you, there is a free version and they actually might have some type of promotion going on with everything. Um, but I definitely encourage you guys to get the, um, the next level up. It might cost like 12 95 ish a month. Um, uh, but you get more, um, pictures and more backgrounds and, and different, different things that can definitely help you. If you're not that person in a good design eye and you need ideas, Canva is definitely a way to go. Um, for your, I call it more, when we get out of this pandemic, or even I would say even for a telesummit or for a longer, if you're gonna do a, a little, a mini conference um, on virtually, definitely I would say look out for Fiverr and Upwork. Um, if you are not good at self, some people are excellent. Um, they have Photoshop, Adobe, like that's just too um, techie for me. Um, but if you're into it, then by all means, go ahead. Fiber and Upwork, you know, people, um, you know, you can spend $5, $10 on a really good flyer. And I say that for telesummits and many web- webinars or conferences because um, you're trying to attract a different crowd. And let's think about this, you guys. Let's not be closed-minded. We're not advertising to our friends and our family. We're advertising to potential um, clients, uh, potential customers that you're going to have. And if, especially if you're trying to get more into the corporate space, um, I had got even approached by uh, people who need trainings for their employees to do because they're running out of trainings to do. So you need something that's going to look really nice and posh and clean and put together for uh, a telesummit or a conference that you're going to pitch to corporations on why your training should be um, a part of their to do during this pandemic from working from home. Um, so you want to make sure you have something nice and clean and Fiverr and Upwork can do that. I know a lot of people like with Fiverr, um, the language barrier is there. But if you really just take your time, I've worked with different people from Nigeria to the Philippines. And I really just am very, very specific on what I want for my clients. Um, and it, it definitely does work out. Pierre, you want to add anything? Yeah, I've had some great, I've had some terrible designers on Fiverr. Mm-hmm. And I've had some great designers on Fiverr. Uh, the, I think the biggest difference for me was just how clear I was in my communication and providing samples. And, and, and folks, if you need inspiration, please don't just sit there and try to dream up magically by yourselves. Just Google des- flyer design inspiration. Just Google it. Mm-hmm. Take a screen capture. Start, start giving yourselves examples of things like not, not steal, but borrow inspiration um, from other people. If you have time, learn Canva. It's a really simple program to use. Mm-hmm. Upwork is an online freelancer site. I know Justin put in the, the comments, he uses Design Pickle, and that's unlimited des- designs for a flat monthly rate of about $350. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, so it just depends on, on the level you are. Right. And, and I really want to recommend that if you have, if you have the money uh, but don't have the time that you you let somebody else do it. Yeah. And I know we try to save money and you know we're all entrepreneurs and you know we're waiting on that 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 COVID-19 <laughs> um 
for small businesses or whatever state, <laughs> state that you're in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but but uh, when we're scrolling on social media, the idea is to stop the scroll because everybody is scrolling. And if you're, if you're fly, if you're advertising, if you're thumbnail, I know Sam will mention thumbnails earlier. If your thumbnail is not eye catching, people are not going to stop. Right. And it's sometimes better to let somebody else do that for you. So yeah, I, I've, I was a graphic designer for like four years, but whenever I can, I hire somebody else. That's one less thing on my plate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, especially if you have a clientele, if you're somebody that still has clientele coming in, um, in, I mean, it's just even regular day life without the pandemic, there's a lot of things going on. You're trying to pitch, you're trying to get new clients in. It's definitely, it's better to outsource it out than try to keep all this money in. Um, definitely have learned from experience from starting in my, my first year of rescue to try to do all, take on all of this work on my own versus hiring and getting staff to help me, um, even in the pre, pre work before the day of the event it's definitely worth it. And you'll realize how much uh, less stress you are and more happy of doing your business and not suffering in your business. So definitely, if you can outsource it, outsource it for sure. Um, the power of Eventbrite. So most of you guys, well, all of you guys should have um, found this either from Facebook, Instagram, whatever, but it leads you back to getting a ticket on Eventbrite. And some people are like, why? You know, why not just put it on YouTube Live, Facebook Live, and all of that? So, um, has anybody heard of email listing and yeah, email lists? How big is your email list? If you ever had to apply to um, either be in an article or in the a, a local newspaper, or even on the news, they may ask you, some people may ask you, how many followers do you have on Instagram? Or how big is your email list? They want to see how many people are actually paying attention to your brand a month and how many people are subscribing and buying into your brand um, by giving them and trusting them with you with their email address. So the power of Eventbrite is that we captured your email address. Now we're forever connected unless you unsubscribe. But don't unsubscribe us, okay? Don't, don't, don't unsubscribe. <laughs> but let's let's think about how sometimes you go and you're like on JCPenney or Sears or Target, and then next thing you know, you're getting a Target newsletter about, oh, there's something still in your cart. You they got your email address somehow, right? So the power of that is that you're ever forever connected to somebody who was interested in your brain. Um, people really sleep on this after this event. Some people would never email them. They're, they might say the thank you, but they would never email them ever again and they have their email address. Some of you guys might be our potential next client, our next customer, or a connection to another customer. You guys may refer us out, right? But you would never refer us out if you're not connected to us. So the power of Eventbrite is that um, I'm a MailChimp girl and other people use other... Um, um, different uh, uh, collection of emails and newsletters. And there's totally different ones, but I'm going to advocate for MailChimp right now because it's user friendly. I've gotten many of my clients who are not tech savvy be able to understand MailChimp with a breeze. So MailChimp integrates with um, Eventbrite. And so once you register, it automatically goes to my MailChimp that collects emails and builds an audience. So you can build an audience in MailChimp, whether it's my, for my Facebook lives, to a webinar, to an event that you um, purchase a ticket to, I have an audience that I know exactly where you came from. So when I'm sending out newsletters and I want to be specific with my target audience on what I want to advertise, you guys are interested in learning about virtual events. So if I ever wanted to do something again with virtual events, you're my audience that I select from. So the power of Eventbrite is definitely pulling that in. The second thing that people sleep on with the power of Eventbrite is Eventbrite has its own SEOs, mm -hmm. um, search engine optimization. And so if you post your event in multiple cities, and this is like a really golden nugget, right, Pierre? <laughs> um, if you post your event in multiple cities, for example, the 10 top cities in the United States, Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas, um, uh, Houston, uh, New Orleans, Miami, um, Washington, DC, uh, New York, 
though you pick your top major areas, right? Um, Nashville, Atlanta. Um, and so you do this event the same day, but in 10 different cities. Well, what happened is the SEOs on Eventbrite, they start boosting up because it's seeing the same language happening um, over and over again on um, Eventbrite. And so it boosts it up um, a lot so that you're able to see what's going on. And so then when somebody's searching for an event, oh, I'm looking for learning how to do a virtual event. This event will pop up to their top one, no matter what city they're in, because you have 10 cities selected on the same day at the same time happening. So that is one of the major things. And the reason why this major is because if I'm in DC, I've never been to Los Angeles. I've never even been to the West Coast yet. And I now can get connections onto the West Coast by hosting an event multiple times, definitely not doing it one time um, is gonna work. You need to do it multiple times and having it um, a, a, with different times. Now I'm getting different markets. So if I ever was asked, hey, um, on the West Coast, you wanna do an event, I have a pool of people, a network who have actually interacted with me from the West Coast because I, I hosted these events um, different times of the month or throughout the year and I have a pool of people. Um, to, to build from. Um, and I definitely want Pierre to chime in on this because he recently did this um, and want to see how that has helped him in his brain as well. Yeah, so it was a, it, uh, Melissa kind of walks me through how to do not just virtual events, but live <laughs> events as well. Uh, so she coaches me, she coaches me through that. Um, she, she's, I wouldn't say she's hard on me, but she is consistent. And one of the things we were doing was I was doing a webinar series and just putting up the webinar on Eventbrite and trying to get traction and being disappointed that, you know, all of your friends don't share your event just like everybody else. Right. And Melissa said, here's what you need to do. We're going to go on Eventbrite. We're going to find the, ten, the top 10 cities closest to where you are or where you want to have your, your, your webinar. And we're going to recreate the event. And specifically for each city. So we did one for Atlanta and then we, we did like College Park and, mm -hmm. and Decatur and a whole bunch of cities around Atlanta. And then we did one for Orlando and then a whole bunch of cities around Orlando. And I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, I trusted and believed Melissa, but I was pleasantly surprised when I had people from multiple cities because of the, the SEO of Eventbrite, they, it, it showed up in their area multiple people, people from multiple cities, all because it's the same links, right? The same link to the same event to the, I'm bringing them back to the same spot, but I'm going to get them where they are. And I've seen a lot of big brands do this as well. They'll say, we're having, you know, John Maxwell and the Dave Ramsey leadership team, and they're in Atlanta, and they're in Seattle, and they're in Dallas, and you click on the link, and it's a virtual event. So people in their cities are seeing these virtual links and all coming to the same place. And it, and it boosts. There's, there, it's a hustle, y'all. You got to <laughs> figure out how to hustle the system. Mm -hmm. Data and analytics are the name of the game. So reproduce your event. If it's, an, if it's a virtual event, reproduce it. Just go to Eventbrite, hit copy. Copy event. Change the city and state. And then you can do some, some tags in there as well for as right. many cities around where you are and across the country and, and watch as the numbers increase. I know it from personal experience because my coach, Melissa, made me do it. <laughs> yes. So, uh, um, yes, I think Sable got it out. Yep. So hotspots, SEOs are definitely hotspots for sure. Um, and it's work. Like we, as I was um, telling Pierre about this, we ran into a... Um, a realtor who does oh, yeah. this yeah. and she's all over the place. Um, and so that was amazing to see like, oh, okay, you know, we're not the only ones thinking it as well, but it, it definitely works. Um, and you can't just do it one time. That's like, I don't want you guys like, oh, it didn't work, Melissa. I did my event. I posted it one time. You can't, you need to do multiple days. Um, and so if you're going to do it every Tuesday for the next month, do it every Tuesday for the next month and be consistent. Um, definitely on on that you can't post it on Sunday night and go and and then go live on Tuesday. You need to at least give it like a week. If you can do two weeks, great, do two weeks. But at least give it a week so that it's sitting on there. SEOs are building up 
as people are searching. Um, and definitely sharing it out on Facebook, still do that. Still do it on Instagram, still do it on LinkedIn, because again, that all goes back to um, SEOs. Um, definitely uh, goes back to that. Okay. Hey, hey, thanks for joining. Um, okay. So that is the power of Eventbrite. Um, like we were saying, the 10 top cities connecting to the email um, and connecting to Facebook. We definitely went over that. Um, so now we're going to go into um, how to build a dream team of speakers. Um, and, and Pierre, you could definitely start on this one. Yeah, so our event, Activate Your Courage Tour, it is a tour based on my book, Leading While Scared, How to Find the Courage to Keep Going. And we started the tour in Washington, D.C. at the Eaton Hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we went to Baltimore. And then we went to Orlando. We had a stop in Atlanta. And then our stop on March 29th was supposed to be Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what we turned into a virtual event. Listen, listen, folks, it, it really comes down to this. I know you guys are amazing as individuals. I know you, you know tons of stuff. You have great content. Um, you're dynamic in what you do. You're engaging. But you can only leverage, the, just depending on how big your brand and followership is, you can only leverage so big of an audience by yourself, number one. Number two, it is hard to carry things consistently over and over by yourself. So I've learned from doing events, now virtual events, that it is the, the energy is so different when you're not the only person and the audience is so much bigger when you're not the only person. Because all the people who speak and who are a part of what you're doing, they're inviting their friends and their email lists and their social media networks as well. So it exponentially grows your audience. And the more people that you have and the com more comfortable you are with having other people present or share with you, um, the, the, the less you will have to do as an individual to get a bigger, bigger bang out of what you're doing. And for, that, for our online event, the Activate Your Courage Tour, I think we went all day. It was, an all, it was 12 <laughs> to four. And people stuck with us for four hours. And I spoke once in the beginning for about 20 minutes and once near the middle or towards the end for about 20 minutes. And that's all I did. I was just clicking the rest of the time hosting, but it was so much easier just to let it happen because I had amazing speakers on the team, people who I knew would hit it out of the park. And it, some of us might have to work on that because we might be a little intimidated. What if somebody's a better speaker, a better presenter? What if they're more dynamic and people want to hear from them? definitely have them on definitely have them on it's only going to build what you're doing i know even if you have competitors people who do the same thing that you do listen folks there are millions and millions and millions of people out there and it's enough it's enough for everybody to get a slice of the pie so stop trying to do this all by yourself right right and definitely uh, if somebody is an impactful speaker and you may not be on the same level it's still your event at the end of this, like when you look at this flyer, who is standing out to you? Pierre, it's his event. So no, even if he had Kirk Franklin, if he had um, TD Jakes on there, it's still his event. And the fact that he is connected to these different people, it builds confidence in your brand. So people look at you differently. That's you, it's all about the optics um, and understanding that adding people to your telesummit, to your mini conference, um, one, it helps you. It gives you more content. Um, he did a day. He could easily have done a five-day telesummit, an hour each, and really stretch this thing out. Um, and so you can really easily get content um, very easily besides doing it on a one, pay, a one day that is paid and you have to physically be in there versus virtual. So if you had something, for those who had something planned for the first um, um, the first quarter, if it was going to be a, a eight, an eight hour day for your people, you can easily turn this into a week um, um, training or telesummit, however you want to do it and spread it out. Um, you know, I was definitely shocked that people stayed on with Pierre and his, his crew for four hours. Um, and after that's a lot of hours <laughs> instead of the computer, but they did. And that's amazing. 
that speaks to how people were just really engaged. And again, you can't do that by yourself speaking. That is having multiple people on. You'll get worn out. Um, but you can easily stretch that out to a two-day summit or a three-day summit, however long you want to do it. Um, but definitely having speakers. The other thing with marketing is we have five people on here. Pierre makes six. That is six different markets that we're reaching to. They all have different types of connections. So if everybody gets a flyer and they're advertising, hey, come join this free um, empowerment summit. And then now they're sending out to their, again, their email list. There are more people now being exposed and you're being exposed to them. So it's definitely important to have um, building a dream team of speakers for your um, event for your virtual event. Now for the in-person event in Nashville, uh, I'm, that flyer was made on um, Fiverr. I hired my designer on Fiverr who makes really, really good f flyers. For this one, we had to make a quick pivot because we were going down to the wire. Are we gonna mm -hmm. cancel or not? Remember Melissa? Yes. We had to do a quick turnaround. So I just, everything you see on the screen, that flyer, that flyer was made in Canva. So uh, really quick turnaround. And even if you say, I don't want a team of speakers or that's not how my, my business or my ministry or my nonprofit is built, I would, I, would all, I would recommend adding someone to at least hang out in the comments for you. Mm -hmm. Because as you're speaking, you don't always have time to, to respond or sometimes you get distracted, but somebody to hang out in the comments and, and foster engagement as well. Todd says, can we see the other flyer? Uh, yeah, email, uh, e email, email to me. Yeah, and of course, yeah. to the end, we'll show that one too. Yeah. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, content. So, this is important because it's like, yeah, I, I, got, I got my flyer, I have my platform that I'm using, but um, what in the world I'm about to speak about, right? So, um, for those who have books, you have plenty to speak about. Each chapter can be a um, can be a, an event, a virtual event. If you're, a, um, if you're a blogger or you have blog posts, you can easily, I turn that all the time. I have Facebook Lives on um, Wednesdays and Thursday nights. Um, and they start off as blog posts for my website and I turn them right into a Facebook Live. So that's definitely easy to do. If you're a vlogger, um, you can easily turn that content into an event as well. Um, if you taught any type of classes, if you've done any type of training, you can easily turn these things into um, content. Uh, but my Pierre is my content king. Um, so he definitely is, is gonna um, talk to you guys more about how to make sure your content is consistent with your target audience, but how to easily turn content into an event. Yeah, so there's so many different hacks you can do. Uh, one of the one of the ways to do it is to create the event with enough lead time and then ask the people what they want you to talk about. So you can just say, hey, we're doing a leadership summit or we're doing a parenting summit. We're doing an outreach ministry summit. We're doing a, uh, I know Sable does natural hair. We're doing a natural hair summit. It's planned 30 days from now or or 45 days from now. And you start promoting it and then in your social media in your email list hey 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 melissa i'm working on the final details for the natural hair summit and i'm trying to narrow down the topics because i have so many things i want to talk to you about give me a suggestion if we could cover one thing in the summit what would you like covered shoot me an email back and your audience begins to aggregate and point you in the direction of your content so you don't have to start scratching your brain uh, <laughs> and trying to figure out what to do people do it all the time I get so many emails. Hey, Pierre, our summit is going live in two weeks and we just want to do a final check that we have the right content for you out of these four topics. Which one is more most important for you? What that tells me, they haven't written any content or <laughs> finalized any content. They're just mining their list to see what, what they should, what they should talk about. And, and, and it's so easy to do books that you've read, uh, go back and pull out those notes from those books courses you've taken in, in undergrad, grad, go back and take those notes, that old syllabus out, give people credit, you know, it doesn't necessarily, you don't have to reinvent the wheel and things don't have to be uniquely original. The originality comes from your personality mm -hmm. and the way you deliver the content. There's so, so much 
old stuff that you forgot about. Go through those old notebook, old notebooks and emails, old videos, and bring that, repurpose that content. Uh, just in old sermons, repurpose that content five or six different ways, and, you, and you'll never run out. But asking people what they want to hear is always a winner. Absolutely. And, and Facebook will tell you all the time. Facebook people will tell you all the time. Um, and most of the times I'm asking questions, it's on the behalf of my clients. I said, I tell them, ask your audience, I'm about to ask my audience. Mm -hmm. And um, then we come together and say, okay, we see what the people want. Because if that's what they want, that's what they're going to be interested in tuning into. Um, like that Natural Hair Summit, I better see that stable. That's actually a great idea. You that got is that a for really free, Sable. Idea. That's free, okay? <laughs> um, um, Taj, mom, a, a Mamahood um, Summit or Mamapreneur Summit, something like that that's definitely um, relevant. And then think of things that's relevant in time, like we're cooped up. What can you do to talk where people can relate? We're kind you know, we understand COVID-19 is happening, but we're kind of hearing, tired of hearing the news every single day and, oh, it's getting worse. We're at the peak of the curve, all that stuff. Utilize this time of where people are always talking about how they're now being teachers at home to their children. Utilize that. Let's create a little mini summit or, or an event about it. Recreate that content um, right there. Okay, so this is my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> I get so excited about this part. So how to profit from this, right? It's like this is great, Melissa. I'm gonna I'm gonna pay somebody on Fiverr. Okay, I'm gonna I might pay for my Zoom account or my web web uh, web Adinja account or whatever account I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pay for it. But um, ma'am, how am I about to? get my money, my ROI. I'm very big on return of investment, how I'm going to get my ROI on this. So um, just like how this event was free for you guys, please make your events free. I don't think it's going to really work at this moment if because people are offering so many different free events. And again, this is all new to us, right? Doing this thing virtual for so many different types of events. We've always had tele-summits. We always had many conferences online. Um, but actually doing like full on training or events is totally different. So making it free, right? Um, it's definitely important. And the reason why is one, you want people to, you want them to join in. You don't want a price. You don't want a price to stop them from hearing you. Once they hear you, they're going to love you and you're going to win them over. I know it because you guys are in this field. That's how we are as entrepreneurs. We know how to get people to close. So you make it free. Um, the second thing is you're building your list. So if even if somebody doesn't buy your offer at the end, they you're still in your 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 wheelhouse, and so they can see it multiple times. And um, and like Pierre will also tell you, I'm sure he's told uh, most of you guys. Somebody and, and we even for ourselves, um, I know I as a buyer, I will research, research, research before I even purchase. Um, and so the, you have to at least see it six times. That's the average that somebody needs to see it six times before they make a purchase. So that's why it's important to have these type of people in your email list because they need to see you multiple times to be very encouraged. Like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to take that jump. Now there are some people who will see you one time. You said, yep, I'm sold. I need a jump. Um, but it is the average person is six times to, um, definitely make that purchase. So you're gonna make it free, you got their email, great. Now at the end, you're gonna make your offer and you're not gonna be like that salesperson where I had it for 19.95, this is the blue thing and if you buy one, you get two, one, three. No, you can't do it like this. You guys need to be natural, be yourself. And you're telling them why it's important for them to be a part of this deal. Whether now you're like, Melissa, I don't know what to sell. If you have a book, definitely offer your book. Um, if you have a service, offer your service. If you have a product, offer your product. Um, but make sure it's something during this time still economical. Um, I'm very cautious about that because sometimes there are going to be people who are not willing to pay that price that we would nor well, I would normally tell you to um, charge your price. But because we're kind of in a different space financially, we want to make sure it's still affordable, but we want to still make some money right and so and now that it's virtual right you can't do too much of unless it's a physical product if you have a physical product you have to mail it that's different keep your price your price but if you're going to do something virtual you definitely can adjust your price because you don't have to spend that much money because you're virtual right um so you want to make sure you're not too pitchy 
um, but you're still collected to the brand. Um, Pierre, you want to add anything? Yeah, I know some, we have faith-based faith based nonprofits and ministries on here and some mm -hmm. are saying, well, what if I'm not selling anything per se? I think gotcha. it's, it's always important to make an offer of some sort. So if your organization does resources and even if they give those resources away for free, create a scenario where they have to take an action step. If you want this free resource guide, if you want this free book, um, here's a link to sign up to get it. We're not just gonna give it to you because you're on our email list, because you want them to, to be engaged. Um, and if you're a nonprofit, you can, you can be, after you've given them so much information, because free does not mean it's bad. Mm -hmm. Free, high quality, free stuff uh, keeps people with you for a long time. So if you're, if you're a ministry and you take donations after you've had your amazing conference on how to be a better family or how to mm -hmm. be a better spiritual leader, um, feel comfortable with putting your cash app. Hey, continue to donate to our ministry. And here's that cash app link. And because you've given them so much, um, they'll hang with you. But it's, you should always have some sort of con call to action. If you create a separate email list, if you're giving stuff away, if you're having an event in the future, if you do coaching around um, the, the, the webinar, have that. It, it's, it's terrible to have people, and I'm giving to you from personal experience, and Melissa has, has slapped my hand several times for doing this. It's terrible to have people engage for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, however long, and they love you and they love your content, but you don't give them another opportunity to stay with them by making an offer. And an offer doesn't necessarily mean that you're selling something, mm -hmm. um, but if you're an entrepreneur, you need to be selling something, <laughs> um, but make an offer. Hey, even if the offer is, hey, I'm having an, another one right. and we're going to do a VIP or I'm going to do a coaching, a small coaching around this before I open it up to everyone else. Give people a chance. I know we're, I know we're concerned about um, selling things, but here's a piece of advice, folks. Don't count other people's money. Mm -hmm. Don't count other people's money. Give yeah, them an opportunity. You don't, you don't know what that opportunity is like. and You'll never know where it leads. Right. That's definitely important. Um, still charge your worth. Um, definitely. Just be mindful about it. But again, and, and I would say this, if I was talking to a client, I would say you have your top tier, your middle tier, and your last tier. And you see which one they go for. But you're definitely going to put up the top tier first. And then if, you know, like, hey, I really am interested, but, you know, my budget's kind of tight, then that's where you work with somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely for the nonprofits and those who are in ministry, um, you're going to have events next year. Like this is, you know, you're, we're going to get back to some type of normalcy. So having them in your email list is important, whether you're going to have um, church on the lawn next year, or you're going to have a play, um, you're going to have a, a, a cookout with the church, whatever it is you still need these people to be engaged. So just capturing their email and saying, thank you, we got your email being engaged. The important is to make sure their consistency. Mm -hmm. Once you're consistent, then they'll be coming out to your different church events. Um, and that's important because that's how we know that a church is thriving when people in the community is invested in the church, right? Um, and for the nonprofits, nonprofits need donations and you need sponsors and you need people to purchase tickets or give donations for whatever you're working on and definitely keeping them engaged. Um, this is definitely a great time for nonprofits to really offer some free trainings in a different area. Like I was talking to a nonprofit earlier, um, Moms in Baltimore, because um, I'm currently expecting, and um, she's offering virtual um, um, doula services for free. And I'm like, that's amazing. I'm, yeah, I want a doula virtually sure and so she's a nonprofit, though right and so offering these type of services now i'm exposing um her to my network for anybody else who's pregnant that is like okay we can't physically have somebody in there but you know what there's some virtual doula services that can help my spouse or help me with breathing techniques all of that type of stuff um really thinking outside of the box who would have thought that you can do doula services virtual now you won't have that person on you during the delivery room hands-on but at least i'm encouraged 
that I'm going to get a lot of knowledge um, from her and being able to talk to her and even have some screen time during labor and delivery with her um, to just feel extra supported, right? So, but in this free, it's free, but there's going to be a time where it's going to come back around and either I'm helping her by getting other referrals for next year. Hey, who was that doula person you were talking to, uh, talking about Melissa? And it will come back around. The profit doesn't happen right away. Um, the profit definitely can happen a year from now. I've seen that. I've been watching you, Melissa. You know what? I'm finally making a move or I finally um, am, am getting something and I definitely need your services now. So the profit doesn't have to happen right then. That's the beauty of it. And that's why I love seeing entrepreneurs and nonprofits grow because the profit can happen a year or two from now from something mm -hmm. you did today. So that's important to realize. Don't feel discouraged that, okay, I didn't get any money this week or I didn't get anybody to sign up for a webinar. Continue to be consistent and you'll see the profit come in different, manifest in different ways. Justin says, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Uh, Sarah says, that's dope. Taj says, Con congrats, um, Melissa. Um, I asked a question, how comfortable are you with making an offer? Uh, Patricia said, not at all. Taj said, more comfortable. Just have to be extremely organized and comfortable about what I'm offering. And then Patricia said, and that has kept me from doing some things I wanted to do. I always feel like no one will want to pay for the service. Um, you trying to give Melissa hype. I know we got we run it out of time, but you try to <laughs> you try to try to get her hype. Here's the thing that you can do as um, as as a hack, and I know that imposter syndrome is real, Justin. Um, you can have somebody host your event for you, and put it as a part of their hosting responsibilities. Mm. Hey, I need you to intro, and then I'm going to teach my content. I'm going to give my class. I'm going to do me. And then at the end, I need you to pitch for me. I need you to make the offer for me and say, hey, if you really loved working with Melissa and this was valuable, I want to encourage you to make an investment in yourself and your future success, your future success in live events. And for whatever the price point is, mm -hmm. um, sign up right now because today was awesome. You, you felt empowered. You got all these ideas, but we don't want you to be put in a place where the ideas get away from you and you miss that time. So work, work with her and help her rescue the events that you have on your paper, right? So I'm making this up off the top of my head, That's but it's something that, that Melissa doesn't have to do if she's not comfortable. Now, Melissa's comfortable pitching, but if that's not a comfort area for you, even if it's your, this faith-based and you wanna ask for don donations, have somebody else on your team come on the screen. They do it for phonathons and telethons. Mm -hmm. PBS does it all the time. All the time. In the middle of watching a great show on PBS and then somebody comes on the screen. If you enjoyed Many Rivers to Cross, the African-American story, and you wanna see more stories like this, consider a $40 gift to PBS. So, right. so partner with people and that, remember I said, don't do it by yourself, partner with somebody and, and they'll make the ask for you as long as you work out the details of that. Right. And it's, there's power in somebody else advocating for you because it all, it gives clout to your brand. Wow. I mean, that person's basically pitching for that person and they're not profiting at all. That, that speaks volumes to the, the person's brand that this is legit. This is real. Um, and when I first learned about this, um, and she still does this today, wherever she goes to speak, we send her across, she has her hype person, Robin. It's like, they're like Batman and Robin. Her, the Robin is amazing. She brings the energy. She is fire. And at the end, she is pitching, and, but she's making you feel like, come on, what are you thinking here? Like, you definitely need to be a part of this. This is a time to jump. Um, or whatever type of service she has, because she has a nonprofit and a for-profit business. Um, so it definitely works and it, and it can definitely happen for you guys, especially if you're not comfortable. Um, but you do need to get comfortable with money and always start, I mean, jump. I have done a pitch for a $15,000 contract and I said, that's the price and the person paid it. And so you just never know. You can't sit there and minimize yourself. You have to really just go out and try it. And the more you do it, the more comfortable you get to it. And you can understand, you can read people's language and kind of see how people are feeling so that you know if you need to kind of pivot your pitch a, diff a different way. Mm -hmm. And that's for you, Dr. Moore. You said you're not comfortable uh, pitching. Sometimes it just takes doing it and 
doing it's gonna be terrible the first couple of times it's mm -hmm. like it's like riding a bike but then once you get the hang handle of it uh it goes it goes much better uh, that's, that's for you too patricia it, mm -hmm. it goes much better it goes much better yes so um i'm gonna check my email so i can pull up the the picture for um for taj but does anybody have questions questions about what we discussed so far tonight Uh, so while you guys are typing your questions into the comment section, I also want to ask you, when is your next virtual event? Let's put it in the comments. Let's, let's, let's get it on the calendar. Even if you say, okay, a month from now, two months from now, I want to plan a virtual event. When, when, when are we going to put this down on paper? Let's make this happen. Dr. Moore wants to work with Melissa. I will make sure in a few moments we'll give you that contact information. Anybody else on here? Who wants to work with Melissa? I work with Melissa. Melissa is great. I'm not just saying that. Um, but I was I was spiraling, trying to figure out how to how to plan an event and a book tour and a couple of other things. So it's been it's been really really great. Um, Todd says she she will plan hers for the next 30 days. Yes. Okay. Juan, my company is going to have it, uh, IG live. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Great. Uh, oh, DJ wow. Nice. Has anybody seen how crazy that went for him? I mean, that was amazing. It's just, and I'm pretty sure he was like, you know, that wasn't his first night. I think that was like his fifth or sixth night. He mm -hmm. just, it was consistency and continue to go. Mm -hmm. That was so amazing to see. And now he's going to be playing for Essence Festival. If, they, if we are even still having it, I don't know. But regardless, and then he had an um, event with Michelle Obama. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was just amazing to see. I said, that is just consistency and trying it. This is the season of just trying something different it's out of the box just do it because you never know what's going to come from it definitely so let me share my screen one more time um so i can show you guys um this flyer from um fiverr so this is um on the guy from fiverr this is going to be the what the atlanta one yeah nashville nashville this was going to be nashville so um I love Pierre smell there. <laughs> but no, the CE, I mean, this is pretty dope on Fiverr. It's pretty yeah. dope on Fiverr. I, um, and also you can just get ideas from Fiverr as well and then try to recreate it. But again, it's, it's, it's um, if you don't have the time, let somebody else do it. Let somebody else do it. For sure. Uh, Dr. Moore says, I'm planning to share IG Live this weekend. Do it, Dr. Moore. Yeah. Do it. Uh, Justin says, is there a way to go live on Facebook and Instagram simultaneously with only one device? There are uh, platforms, uh, I think stream.io, stream um, yeah. Restream is another one that allows you to have multiple platforms. StreamYard allows you to have multiple platforms as well. Uh, so so just, uh, just Google streaming multiple flat platforms. I mean, there's there's such a flood to the market right now and a lot of tech companies are building uh, different streaming platforms the reason why i like streaming to multiple platforms and i'm a Streamyard user uh, is because i can see all the comments at the same time from multiple platforms and really foster engagement but mm -hmm. more platforms you can get on at the same time um, the the merrier yes so for those who um i i do have um a small offer. <laughs> um, so we're, what we're doing is we're definitely helping those who probably most likely, especially for the person who has three events in the first quarter, my heart just goes out to you, it really does. Um, and so we're working with people who have physical events and just need to a strategy session to really um, make it to now a virtual event. And so you might already know how to use all the different streaming platforms, but you're like, I just don't even know how to take this live thing and make it virtual i need somebody to help me strategize through that so i put the link in there for that one and so that's called um live event um co consultation turning it into um virtual so the second one is for um because somebody said i'm not comfortable with with um pitching or hosting my own event so we are now offering um, let me put the title of this in the chat as well. We're now offering virtual event planning. So this will also go with the consultation, but added where I will be um, on your platform 
and be um, hosting with you. So I will be the person helping and doing the pitch for you. I will be introducing you, your different speakers, uh, and I'm hyping you up. I am your hype woman. Um, and so I would definitely be there for you and work, um, work with you along with your event. Um, we'll still do the whole strategy thing to see what we're going to do. We're going to take it one day, two days, how many days. Um, but then I would definitely be present with you on your live stream. And, and also, um, as Pierre know, if any of my clients have events, I put it on my newsletter to my, to my folks. Um, and I've grown, I started only doing newsletters maybe a year and a half ago, and I have over 2,000 people in the newsletters. So, and still growing. So um, that's definitely something that we want to offer so we can help you build your brand while you're still doing your events um, for that. Um, I do use MailChimp for my newsletters, yes. And I use Wix. Um, I have Wix as my uh, website platforms. And um, because all the different platforms now are having some type of newsletter, um, I use Wix. And then I, for my MailChimp, is going to be more for my webinars. But for my regular newsletters, I use Wix. And they have pretty good um, templates as well. OK. So I put both of the links in there. Um, and so definitely, let's you know reach out. Um, if you want some time to think it over, definitely. But I will definitely put the information. You guys get a newsletter from me. You're connected with me forever. <laughs> and I will definitely um, put those resources in there for you guys as well. Um, whether you're going to be doing it this year or next year, I'm not letting go the virtual thing because we just never know if we're going to prayfully not be in the situation again. But it still is, is I think it's a definitely a different way to think about how to start somebody off from being scared to do their first event live and in person. I think it's a great way to get your feet wet and do it virtual first and then grow your audience to then do something live versus jumping out and doing something live in person. Definitely. Um, do you, Neil Trim for that, I have some questions. Definitely put your questions in. Uh, Juan had a question. Does Zoom have the polling function for 200 attendees? It's a different package. So um, the package I have, I think it's like $14.95. You can have up to 100 people. Um, but when you start going over 100, you have to go up a package. You might want to ch also check out uh, the webinar add-on to Zoom as well, Juan. It'll give you some different functionality. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm realizing some people are using WebEx. I've never used WebEx before. I see a lot of corporations using that. Um, so that is something you can probably research as well. Webinar Jam, yes. Webinar Jam does have the polling function for, for depending on the package uh, mm -hmm. that you get. Uh, Justin is asking, how important is it to repurpose content from live events? It's very important. Um, to you, it think, you think like, I just did that two months ago. But you remember that. I don't. And you can always <laughs> reuse that. Um, I used to think the same thing. Man, I need to think of different lives each week. If you get a good calendar of 90 days of content, you can flip that calendar again in the next 90 days, changing the topic and just adding on a little bit something that you might have learned to add to your toolbox. So you can easily um, repurpose content um, from a live event. So example, if you're going to do a live event and you're going to talk about how to um, make lotion, and you're gonna do it in person, now you, you're gonna do it virtually, but you can break that up to different things. Is what type of lotion do you wanna do? Do you want one with smell? Do you want something with, with medication in it? Is it gonna be for your hands? Is it gonna be for your feet? Is it gonna be for your hair? Like whatever, you can definitely utilize that and repurpose it. And then still, the same event that you had to uh, postpone, you can still do that event next year. Because I, if you're, if for you, you're like, I did this already. But again, I might be new to your network. So I don't know that you did that last year in a different capacity. Um, okay. I started making Wix website, um, but how does MailChimp and Wix work together? I'm trying to think, do they integrate? I believe they do integrate. I think there is a plugin on Wix. Um, just Google that. I believe there is a plugin. Um, yes, there is a plugin. There is a plugin. Mailchimp and Wix talk together, so it can, you just plug it in for your newsletters. Um, 
and you can definitely plug in your YouTube videos. I do that all the time. If you, uh, once you guys start seeing my, some of my newsletters, you'll see that I plug in my YouTubes into the, into my newsletter. That's definitely fine. That helps also getting people to subscribe to your YouTube page. That's reusing content. If you did, I've, there's plenty of videos that I've done last year. We repurpose it. And here, here's a, a tutorial or some information on how to do a women's conference. That's my, that's my, um, I'll call it my trending one that I have, women's conference. Um, that is always um, getting some good reviews. Um, there are platforms that I have, okay. Branded, uh, I would think all of them do branding now. Um, right, Pierre, on Web Webinar Jam, Web Ninja, even Zoom, you can do branding on Zoom too. Mm -hmm. and, it, and if you wanna do something, like, I mean, it would be, if you're doing like a summit, uh, or conference and you have multiple speakers. So part of what I do as a professional speaker and I get to travel and I get to be at a lot of conferences where they have event apps and a person can do one click mm -hmm. and you'll bring up the name of the speaker and all of their contact information and you know you can ask questions. That, that works really well for live events. Right. For an in-person event, um, depending on the size, I'm not sure I would recommend an app uh, because you're already on a virtual platform. So everything that you're trying to do as far as communication, I would try to do it with inside of that platform. And you could also make, make use of the slides on the screen if you want to share information to introduce people, uh, use the chat box and comment section for, for Q&A. And then afterwards, because you have everyone's email list, you can continue to follow up with information if you missed anything but try to keep if we're since we're already virtual try to keep people inside of the platform instead of using a combination of platforms at the same time unless you're doing something like streaming from one platform to another because sometimes people get lost in the transfer if you're like hey can you can you send it in on your phone and do on the screen at the same time sometimes there can be some it can be a, a drop off but if you can make it work, we would love for you to share that uh, with us. Yeah. How you make that work. Definitely. These are good questions. All right. And then also, um, please share your event with me. I'll definitely share it out to my folks. I want to be a part. I uh, definitely want to be see what you guys are doing um, and, and making sure that um, I'm holding you guys accountable. <laughs> she, she I want to see events flying off the wall. He means that. Oh my. <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, so again, I, I'll drop the link again one more time um, for the virtual event planning and then the consultation. Um, so definitely um, utilize that. Get on, get on my schedule um, and let's talk and see how we can work together to help you. Um, one, not only during this pandemic, but in the future, definitely making sure that um, we're keeping you on brand and keeping you exposed to different networks and different opportunities um, that can definitely come along with that. Okay. Anybody else has any other questions? Pierre, any closing thoughts? Uh, I'm trying to check and see that everybody put their, their virtual event date in the, in the comment section. All right. Yeah, commit, commit to it, folks. Commit to it, commit to doing an event, even if it's a small one, even if you want to just plan out a Facebook Live mm -hmm. uh, and not be so sporadic. Some of us can't do just off the top of our heads and be amazing, but com commit to it because everybody is in the digital space now. We're gonna be here for a little bit longer and you wanna take advantage of this for your brand, your business and your ministry. Uh, so you got to start to get your feet wet. If you got any questions about how to do these things and how to make them work, please, please, I beg of you, reach out to Melissa. She, she knows it well and she can help walk you through it. May 9th. May 9th for Taj. All right. I'm on it. I am on it. Invite me, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you so much for spending um, um, the time with us. 
Uh, we definitely, this has been in the works even before the pandemic. And when it happened, we were like, okay, there's no excuse now. We have to really do this. Uh, but just really sharing with people on how it's so easy to be able to do um, an event, whether it's live um, or virtual. Um, so definitely do not allow your fear. My favorite thing is um, how to move forward, leave fear, worry, and doubt behind and moving forward. This is a time to just move forward and do it. No regrets, just do it. Okay, so have an awesome night. Thank you guys so much. And we'll talk to you guys soon.